Hello YouTube, Damo underscore 23 here, and welcome back to Better Than Potter. We're not, uh, but we're in a competition that we can maybe, just maybe, think about winning if we can knock Liverpool off today. Hence why we're giving you the FA Cup fifth round against Liverpool at home at the America Express Community Stadium. If we finish where we are, sitting at the moment 13th, and we will recap how we're here and tactics and what we've done um, in a second, if we could finish in and around 13th, the board would keep us, and more importantly on top of that, if we were then to somehow knock Liverpool out, go and get to Wembley or something, I would say that it's a pretty successful year. You know, if we were to win the FA Cup and finish 13th, maybe it's not as good as what Potter maybe could have done this whole year if he was at Brighton, but that would be pretty positive. Saying that though, more than likely we're giving you an episode where Liverpool snap five past us, but we never know. Um, I'm going to start talking about transfers first because we did spend some money on the ins on some players because we did make some sales. Now, firstly, Trossard wanted to leave. I highlighted that. 34.5 mil on the out he went. We needed to replace him. We've changed system a couple of times. I think I've settled on something right now. Secondly, um, we needed to get a striker in if we went to up top or someone that can play out wide. Found that player in um, Joaquin Correra, the former Inter striker. Was at Lazio, was at Sevilla. Um, as you can see, at Inter barely being used, eight appearances for us, four goals and assists, and the player of the match at 7.9 is not a bad return as well. Bought him traditionally to play up front in the two, could play out wide, um, and in the system we're using, which I'll highlight before we get into the game, he does play up front over a Danny Welbeck. Um, just like the look of him, six foot two means you can go long to him. Agility and pace, which means you can get him behind and he can dribble and if he plays out wide, he's got great technique as well and can whip a ball if needs be. Um, in the end, uh, we paid 12 mil up front, 62K per week being paid by Inter. He was on 110K there at Inter as well. We got him for 68 for as an important player. So we're only paying 6K for him for the next few years as his contract ran out in 2025 there at Inter as well. Next on the list was Danny Ceballos. Now, picked Danny up because there was part of me that said if we ever went diamond, we need another midfielder of quality. He is a midfielder of quality. He can play very well at 26, coming from Real Madrid. I think that's okay. Um, we signed him initially on a free, and then Real Madrid only wanted 1.1 mil in order for him to come in right now. Because it's so little money, I've been able to give him a big amount of wage of 140k as a star player. He hasn't played great, but um, from what I've seen, midfield ratings are kind of like last year. They're not particularly great. At the same time, we haven't been overly fantastic either, as we've been trying to figure out what the best sort of tactic is to use this year on FM at least for the beta but great player good amounts of quality and if you have a look at the team and how we set up in our new system um, he does fit the build as anyone over three and a half star is a pretty decent to good player at this level lastly though we went big on uh, approaching deadline day shipping goals you look at Webster's in poor form. You look at Van Heck, not really good enough just yet at 22. Yet. Question marks if he ever will be good enough. And you don't want to really be playing Veltman. Dunk makes a few mistakes, but at least Dunk has the stats to say, I'm a decent centre-back at this level. So you spend big and you get Stala Sutalo in. At 23 years of age, has the potential to become a really good centre-back. Croatian international board him at 22, which the board loves. Big boy at six foot three, good marking and tackling with decent amount of headering, good amount of mentals. Um, and to be quite fair, he's come in and look good in the five games. Got a goal as well. We're very, very happy with him. In terms of stats, so we'll see, you know, since we last met, in terms of uh, results, pretty mixed bag. Um, we came back, and I believe I gave it the Southampton game, which we lost um, last episode, I think it was. Uh, from there, we have had a few indifferent results. Um, we beat Leeds 3-2 in a game where we looked good. We did the business, uh, but at the same stage, we weren't like solid solid we started in the diamond didn't really work i then switched after being one nil down into starting the diamond started four for two um i switched into the diamond the diamond worked well so i was like okay maybe we just have to trust the diamond we then played the diamond against sheffield dominated the game conceded a goal though early dominated eventually one could have scored five or six okay maybe the diamond's the system last time we thought the diamond's the system we played villa we got slapped this time we played uh, played villa at home Diamond had more possession, had more corners, 16-3. Pass completion, very similar. Yet Villa slapped five past us. 
and they were four new up by half time. Um, which made you question, is the diamond really the system? Because we had a, same, a similar thing at the start of the year where it looked good, then we went um, and got slapped, and then you know we played Forest in an episode. We then played Arsenal, and against Arsenal, I tried a 4-3-3, didn't work. This was a possession-based, lower block 4-3-3. We got really outclassed. Um, I switched late doors into the 4-4-2 or the 4-2-4. Nothing seemed to happen. Um, and then we played Forest in the, the FA Cup. Went back to the diamond. Yeah, we shipped goals, but we scored goals ourselves. Um, two nil down at half time. Stayed in the diamond out of frustration. Went massive second half with Welbeck. Happy with that. Against Bournemouth, we played. We won four nil. Stayed diamond again. Looked good. Solid performance. Bournemouth probably not good enough at this level, which is standard. And then we played at Leicester. And against Leicester, we went diamond. Lost the game. Played meh. We didn't create enough. For what it seems, it feels like this diamond isn't the system. It's too inconsistent. There's too many ifs and buts. Um, and it looks like, from what I can tell, it's teams that play a bit more direct and have a li little bit more high tempo, or you know, even though we're on a high tempo in the diamond, teams that are a bit more direct and look to exploit space and run at people seem to be doing the system. Against Leeds, we drew one all. Uh, yet again, not a good enough. Uh, again, at home, dominated in terms of shots and you know, had possession, didn't account, count to much. And then against Wolves, it was the final straw where the Diamond, away from home, had X year of over 2.6. They had an X year of 2.1. We drew nil nil. There is no point playing this system if it ain't going to score goals. And when they keep clean sheets, it's because we're keeping clean sheets and we're just giving away too many points in games where we're open at the back because we're not good enough to knock the ball and knock it around and keep it. Or when the games we do, we do not score. So with that being said, those are what we've used. We then went into Everton and I went in, I've been watching some YouTube tactics, uh, you know, RDF tactics and um, the, G the GYMR boys as well, um, testing tactics. And oh, we came to this 433, which is a base of one of the GYMR um, tactics that they're testing at the minute, which is on YouTube, um, which you can find somewhere if you type them into the YouTube. And it works on, you know, getting people, paying out from the fence, being super duper direct on standard, being on a much higher tempo, running at people, being more expressive. In the game against Villa, which if you watch the you if you've watched the VOD back, links down below to come watch watch it all live on Twitch. Villa went direct and quick with the three men up front and they pumped us. I might even show you the goals for what happened against Villa. And I said, I want a bit of that. And I try to create it. I haven't been able to create it. This system, and I only played one game, and I know it's Everton, we won 3 0, but that is definitely the best we've played all year. Now, if you watch the Villa goals here, I'm not, don't care about our goal with McAllister, watch the Villa goals. They're on the break, and it's direct, and it's everything. Now, obviously, this isn't, uh, but the next few goals are Matty Cash, good ball, Ollie Watkins, fine. The next couple of goals on the break are exquisite. All right, and it's all about getting people in the right half spaces. Great ball at the top, the Watkins. Started with the move of a long ball. If you go into the third goal, though, I believe it's one they hit on us on the break. Well, it's a carbon copy by the looks of it. There we go. Ball over the top again. Very direct goal. And I think it's... Is it the fifth one that we get slipped on the break or something? It just All I want you to do is keep an eye out on where the front three is. They're narrow. They're inside. And because I'm playing with wing backs that behind our wing backs as well, I want this shape because it seems like in the system that ball is the ball. Where you can do this and, you know, you get a play in behind and then you just score, right? And it was pretty perfect. And that was the template for what I tried to create. Yeah, you didn't see it enough and we could rewind and see how they build out but usually it was them winning the ball after we've had possession one long ball to Bundia Bundia would turn and play and then the ball over the top and I was like okay if that's going to be the meta then we need to change we scored from a car corner St Stalalo great but then the rest of the goals weren't too bad right we win a header Andreas picks it up and drives and yet again like Villa are, I've got people in behind fullbacks on this side. It doesn't come out that way. It does eventually. But a Stupian gets there, gets down the line, whips that Correa header. Thank you very much. Um, and then lastly but not least, our last goal, very slimmer again. Bit more direct, bit more run at the opposition, bit more get at him as well. Stupian running inside, he keeps going. We get lucky because we win the ball back. We have dunk. But yet again, it's very quick movement and we score. Eventually, it was very quick movement, and we score. 
It's not very quick movement in my score. Okay, interesting. It's doing one of these, but it's going to give you the next 10 seconds of gameplay before we actually score. Here we go. Lamptey wins. Look at the look where the free are. Inside, in the half spaces. Exactly what you want. McAllister here. Couple turn. Ball into Andreas getting in behind as an inverted winger. And a finish. Exactly what we want to see. So the system, if you look at it, the tactics are is on attacking to increase our ability to be a bit more direct. Standard, so we can go short when we want, but go long as well. I've definitely seen that shorter and much shorter does not work. Possession overrated. Um, still can look to keep the ball in the system, but we look to play at a much higher tempo. Um, we stay fairly wide. Main reason starting fairly wide is the players will start wide and then look to come in the half space. Seems to be the thinking from what I've watched on YouTube. Passing the space, run at the fence seems to be really, really good. A stoop and getting in good areas, doing that and expressive. Taking shorter, shorter kicks, looking to counter and counter press because we are much higher than a line. Preventing goalkeeper distribution, get stuck in. And then I've told us because, well, if we're going to be that high, we're going to press, we're going to go direct. Trap the ball inside. Stay wide in these channels. Get it inside and funnel it into the one, two, three, four, five guys that can win it and press. Because if we win it and press, it's one ball out to a winger who's getting in between fullback and centre back, and we'll be in one on one or for a crossing opportunity. Um, at the same time, if they do break us down through here, we are definitely going to look to stop the cross. Not telling us to drop more or step up in the defensive line. Leave that standard, but the rest are as they are. Now, Liverpool. I'm going to quickly mention, they've had a pretty good time of it. They just won the Cabaret Cup. Unlike in real life, they're uh, flying in this save with Man City. Uh, in real life, I'm obviously having a pretty poor time. Now, this is going to be the ultimate test here. Is Can we go out there and beat Liverpool in an FA Cup game? Probably not. Uh, but we'll wait and see what goes on. As you can see, still in a C and a B from the board. They're still happy with how we're going in the league, um, which, to be fair, 13th after these results, negative 3 and 31 points. There is a world where if we can somehow go on a run, we might be able to finish even top half or mid-table, but we should be definitely safe in our job. Now, as you can see here, apart from Sabah's playing as a Mazala and support, which he can do, and he's not bad, I can also go to a centre-mid on attack because that does seem to work well as well, and I might actually try that. Um, the Mazala on attack did all right, but I think the centre-mid on attack might work well. Um, it allows us to line up like so, with everyone in their best position. And as you can see here, our midfield going forward are all in their best spots. Correa playing in the best spot as well. Andreas is, you know, definitely much talked about in the community already of being a very cheap wonder kid. He's been fantastic um, and has been a very good replacement for Trossard, who was pretty poor. Um, the wing back, the fullback on attack and the wing back on support seems to work. Um, just fiddling around seems to work, uh, even though we've only seen the one game. Um, they... There's no apparent reason why fullback on attack and wingback on support works. They both seem to do a pretty good job. Keep some balance there as well. Uh, and yeah, look pretty good. Starlo and Dunk and Lamptey are still doing a decent job. So we've been okay. Now, in terms of what we're going to do for the uh, team today, so I'm actually going to go like that, like that, and I'm going to get McAllister back a line um, as well. We're going to give a star in this game to Julio Nesso. Now, it is pretty poor on Danny Welbeck because he's got 9 and 26, which is okay, but Correa has been pretty good. And we are going to go with this team here. It's going to be Sanchez, Lampy, Dunks, Tatalo, and Estupian, Tarum, Mikalisa, Sabayos, and Essio, Schlop, um, Andreas. Um, I call him, Sh it's not Schlop, it's Andreas, blah, 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 um, and Correa up top. Now, this is going to be the biggest test of the lot. Do I think we win? Probably not. But I thought, you know what, we've got a pretty positive result against Everton. Um, you know, the league seems like we're going to be keeping our job pretty safe. The board are pretty happy. Maz will give you Liverpool after they just win the Cabaret Cup to test the system. And they've got Milinkovic Savic starting, who they just signed. Kelly is the cup keeper. Gomez, Canate, Van Dijk, and Simikas as well at the back. So pretty decent side there. Simikas in pretty good form in real life, apart from the rest of Liverpool. But uh, expect to get hit on the break as well. But Diego Lotta, Diego Jota gets picked pocketed by Lamptey. And yeah, this system, we can still look to keep the ball, but we'll look to be direct too as Liverpool look to press, which uh, is standard. Dunk now picks it up and hopefully can look for a ball in behind here or look to get it to a midfielder, which we do with Danny Ceballos, who finds Correa, needs runners. Instead, he turned into Canate, which was probably the worst thing to do. McAllister wins it straight back though. Great press from us. And Sanchez now finds Dunk. And Dunk turns stupid. He can run at people, and he will. And this is where Andreas loves getting the ball. He does. Correa, big moment. 
He went with the chip. He probably just had to side foot it past Kelly. That was a goal. And we should have been 1-0 up. But yet again, that hunting the ball, trapping inside, seems to be the way to go. And I have enjoyed what I saw against Everton. It's the sort of movement that I see the AI do to me against teams that sit there and try to be a bit more direct. So I'm very happy with that as well. 31 minutes played, nil-nil here in the FA Cup. And Sotalo finds a Stupian, who can definitely drive and does. Finds Andreas, and Andreas now to Ram. Stupian getting in beyond. And in the end, it looks over the top for Correa, who won't pick that one up, and Virgil Canate deal with it eventually. Um, it was on. The ball was there. And as they learn, the system will be all right. Sanchez, brave. And in the end, Taram wins the header. Stupian now takes Bobby on. Brave man to do that, taking on Bobby, because that's what he's good at is the press. But Stupian wins it back off him. Stupian now, been slightly the better side, you feel. Virgil heads away. Taram can win that and does. And Nessio, the youngster... He can drive down this right-hand side. He whips it. Correa's there. We lead 1-0 at home against Liverpool Football Club. And, well, I know it was more of a, okay, let's see how this system works. We're in a bit of dreamland sort of, uh, you know, place if we think we're actually going to beat Liverpool and win the FA Cup and go on a run. But that dream's alive and well. We're 1-0 up. Inesio whips. Correa scores. We lead 1-0 against Liverpool. And you can tell from the movement it's, quick, it's ferocious, it's fluid, and at the same stage, we look to press and hunt as we've won the ball there again. Andreas with a chance for 2-0, and in the end, Keller got a toe to it to keep it from being 2-0 in two minutes between the goals. Not even, probably about a minute. But yeah, you can see from that front three, they're getting in the right areas. The inverted wing is doing a great job. Could play inside forwards. I don't see there being much difference, but yeah. It's not too bad. We lead 1-0. I'm very happy. Start the second half. If we could play how we just played for the next 45 minutes, I'll back us to score a second and hold on. Kiata finds Yota. Good tackle from an SEO. Dunk. Keeps going. Taram. Great bullying for Danny. Just didn't find him. It was the right idea. Taram, though, steps up, wins it. Chance hasn't scored a goal for us, I don't think. And in the end, deflected into Kelly's hands means we will not score. Um, when this team is fully fit, McAllister actually plays on the right-hand side as an inverted winger, but comes inside. But being right-footed does allow him to do, go both ways. Sulla dropping very deep to win that header. Interesting. And now he picks it up and looks for Bobby, who won't get on that. At the moment, we've stifled Liverpool very well in this system. Dunk. Sotalo. Stupian. Andreas wanted it. Ignored it initially as Stupian and still ignored it. And now loses out to Gomez. If he just plays the ball down the line, we're in. And now it's Bobby. Bobby with a big moment. Sanchez with good hands. Still 1-0 Liverpool. 62 minutes played. Even game of football statistically, but we've had the better of it in the match engine, you feel. Virgil now goes long. Picked off by Estupian. Sotalo left it for him. Sanchez. Sotalo still looking to keep the ball in the system, being standard in high tempo, which I like as well. Lamptey now. Wing back on support. Bombs on. Looks to beat. He's quick. He's away. Here he goes. And then gives it away to Diogo Yoto. He got excited and then that happened. In the end, Sotalo wins another header. Taram, McAllister, bodies off Sulla. Correa looked offside. It's a bit chaotic, this highlight, but that's kind of the nature of the game. We have conceded goals in second halves a lot this year. Kellyer looks long for Bobby. Dunk wins that header. Taram takes a touch and then gives it away. And Bobby for a goal. It's off Dunk and... The deflection of Dunk over the keeper has made it one all. We've been really good. But we have been hit by Liverpool. A poor touch from Taram. He touched it and then ran past the ball, which would never happen in real life, I don't think. But it is what it is. And then Bobby's, uh, you know, chip. Dunk's going to block it. It's come off him. And there you are. Highlight back down the other end. Yoda now. I need to start thinking about some changes here. Bobby. Are they going to score two goals in two minutes to kill this bubble? Probably. Bobby, Yotta, Kiata can hit, does hit. There you go. Liverpool scored two goals in two minutes, and you're probably thinking that's all she wrote. You'd be thinking, right, Andreas for Welbeck, get Correa out on that side there. I think that's one move. Billy Gilmore in as a box-to-box. -box. Probably get Danny in there. 
Tarum's pretty dead. Don't really have a defensive midfielder that I can bring on for him. Stupin's pretty dead. Get Joe Scully out. I'll go something like that. For my new up, the 2-1 down. It's been the story of this year so far that we've played really well and conceded a lot or we've played really bad and then copped it. There's been no, oh, you played really well and you've taken a big scalp and hold on. You know, Arsenal, we drew one all two. Danny, score. You know, Arsenal, we drew one one two. He's conceded late. Played really well against Spurs. Conceded late to lose. Yeah. Not particularly nice that we conceded there because we played really well. Billy Gilmore, corner. Cleared away. I actually need to load up my corners in this system because I forgot to do that. Simi Kaz probably beats the whole field and scores, right? Semi beat to Rum and then turned into him. And Nessio picks that one up. Billy Gilmore needs runners. Correa's picked that one up. And then we've given it away as Scully was looking to get beyond. Across the semi cast now. Picked off by Lamptey. This game's still in the balance. So Tarlo, Scully. Interesting that he went all the way back to Sanchez there, but okay. Dunk. Highlight still going. Taram gets pressed. Billy Gilmore wins that well. Great ball to Anessio. Lamptey's with him. Anessio, though, whips that. Welbeck. Goal. 2 all. Front stick. Danny Welbeck scores yet again. It's apparently it's his 17th of the year. He must have scored, like, some goals against some people in the cup. Um... But yeah, apparently Veltman is a DM. I don't think we really have a DM out here. Billy Gilmore can go in a DM and then we get Gross. I guess that's what we do. We do that. Danny Sabas on a 6.2. Doesn't get a good match rating, does he? Anyway, we've been the arguably we've been the better side. Is there going to be some late drama here in the FA Cup? 90 minutes played. Is there going to be a highlight? There is, and if Liverpool score, it's going to be the most cruel way to get beat. It's the most cruel way to get beat. Liverpool in the 95th minute. Break our hearts. We've played so well. And Liverpool beat us 3-2 in the last header of the game, you would say. With 30 seconds left on the clock, Liverpool beat us in the FA Cup at home 3-2. We've stood up valiantly. If we play like that in this system for the majority of the rest of the season, we're definitely going to finish mid-table and at least achieve having a second season here. It looked a lot better. It was a lot more direct, a lot more fluid. And we stood up to a Liverpool side that was pretty, you know, pretty full strength. Um, you know, he cost us. Matip came on there. Canate, Virgil did start. Trent came on late. That did start at right back. Gomez, which is whatever. Salah and Yotis played 90. Kiaden and Savage played 90. Um, as well, you know, Bobby played most minutes. It was a pretty good Liverpool side. We didn't get the result, but if we play like that, boys, be extremely, extremely, extremely happy. Um, I don't think so. We deserve far more than that. And I actually think that's obvious. I think we had better XG and deserve to have uh, held on there. But it is what it is. I wonder if Klopp would agree with me. But yeah, uh, don't need to talk about it. Um, it's always difficult when you're facing someone like Jürgen. Um, it's a shame that we agree, group. Brighter Street, Ryan, everyone could be happy. Uh, he was pretty good in SEO in the game. Naby scored a great goal as well. He scored two goals in two minutes. Did Liverpool, but yeah. In terms of next episode, we do have a couple of hard games against Chelsea and City. Um, I'm actually going to give you one of these games in the run in here somewhere and then the end of the season because we end the season with Forest. There's a world where this goes very, very wrong and somehow we get drawn into the relegation fight. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think there's more of a chance we go out there and we get a result against Southampton and then West Ham we get a result and then Fulham we get a result and we'd probably then look to give you a game against like a Brentford again or something like that where we're looking to finish top to mid-table. Uh, but there's also a chance where we go, we get beat by Southampton, Chelsea, City, West Ham, and next minute we're playing Fulham, knowing that, hang on a second, we need to win this game to probably stay in the league. So, yeah. It could go a couple of ways, and that's going to be the end of the episode. We get beat by Liverpool. We played well. If we play like that for the rest of the year, maybe, just maybe, not this year, but next year we can do better than what Potter could have done here at Brighton. Who knows? Till then, I'll see you next time. Give it a like and subscribe.